it is the same types of subjects. And in fact, this painting and that painting are very similar in terms of the position of the figure, the, the instrument, the, uh, the whole attitude, the sort of preciousness in a certain way of, of the image that is a little different than the things we've seen before. He does, this is a detail where you can see actually the same kind of reflections. Um, curious arms, I mean, I must say that arms of these two ladies are not the highlight of Vermeer's work, but they are, uh, they're, they're, they're very similar. So you can see exactly the kind of world that, that he is painting. What's interesting is this painting is small, it's much smaller than the others, and that is something that has um, some, you know, whether it's unfinished or not is sort of hard to say. One of the interesting things, I think, uh, about this work, um, and I'm, I'm sort of going to end in, in, in talking about this, was one of the things that I have always puzzled. I've puzzled a lot about this painting over the years, I must admit. Um, and I, at one point, didn't believe it was by Vermeer. Um, but I have uh, now been able to study it more over the years, and I, th and I think I've come to some... I think I understand it a little bit better than I used to. One of the, but one of the things that, it, that bothered me a lot was that I did not recognize Vermeer's handling in that rope. I did see it here. I could understand the head. I could understand all that. That was all my, this probably, because I know this painting, I know the, see, I kind of time, the way the yellow was done and so the little touches is very different. Of course, this is 60s, that's 70s. So you, but in the 70s, you see this. That kind of handling is there. But this is very unusual. This kind of swirly quality to this robe has always puzzled me. And then I was able to study the x-rays and I, this is an x-ray, so the same thing we were talking about earlier with the x-ray. So here's the nails, here's the canvas, here's the lead white. So this is an x-ray of the, of the painting. Um, and I'm going to uh, give you detail just of this area because it's particularly interesting. The study of x-rays is tricky, and you have to be careful about it, but hopefully I can lead you through this a little bit. There are thicknesses of lead white here. And, and, um, and, and thinnesses as, as well. So the thicknesses are the white part, and, and where it's thin is where you see the ground and the, the canvas. But the, th the, gr the thick paints, you see the nose here, for example, and the face, all that. But this is the area that I'm particularly interested in because, to me, the patterns of the lead white usage do not look like the handling on the surface. There are different rhythms. There's a different kind of touch. That, those accents, that accent, that accent, that accent, that line, they are not what you see there. We've done, uh, I haven't personally, but I've, uh, I know it's been done. There have been cross sections taken of this area of the painting. I mean, this, I'm giving you a little bit of a connoisseurship thing, which is, uh, but I'm taking cross sections of this area. So this is lead tin yellow. It's a 17th century pigment, absolutely 11th, 17th century pigment. But there are, in fact, two layers of lead tin yellow. There is a layer, what we see on the surface, and there is a layer of what we see in the x-ray. And the lead tin yellows are slightly different. So I have concluded that this painting is, in fact, a Vermeer that was worked up by someone who added that cloak. And that sort of cloak that sort of fills her out in a way that it doesn't really s allow you to understand her body. Now, we have at the National Gallery, if I go back to that, this painting, The Girl with the Flute. And I don't have the time to go into it. But this painting is exactly the same as the painting that's here, the girl at the, at the Virginal. In that, and you just have to take my word for it, because I, I, um, I can't, I, I, 
this PowerPoint world is a new world for me, and I don't, I have nice slides of this, but I don't have something. When you come to the National Gallery, all right, all right, get up there. It's a great museum. It's, it's, it's almost as nice as the Chrysler, as far as I can tell. Uh, <laughs> look at this area, okay? You'll see right here, and you probably won't, you can't see it, but you'll see it. If you look carefully, you'll see something that looks like a cornflake. Just the shape of a cornflake right there. Now, maybe you could see this little white squiggle up there. Do you see that white squiggle? Okay, that corn, x-rays will show you that that cornflake, and there's a second cornflake right here, are losses in an underlying layer of paint. There's an x-ray, there's no lead white in those areas. There's a loss, it's quite clear, it's quite clear, and those losses are in a collar. And that collar went up here, including that white, that's the edge of that collar. And that collar went right up to the highlight in the pearl earring. Now, it's interesting, she is leaning on her elbow, but her shoulders are absolutely symmetrical. But when you lean on your elbow, your shoulder goes up, so in fact, that higher position is what the body ought to be doing. Now, those, that modeling is not that different than the girl's cloak. I'm quite sure that this was painted not by Vermeer, but somebody found this painting, was damaged somehow, and added that, and when I start to look at Layering of paint, if you look on a microscope, you'll see what layer goes over what layer. You cannot say that's any different than this. So this was all done pretty much the same time, uh, the whole thing. So it was very similar, it's very similar to Vermeer, but it's a little different. Now, both of these paintings, I'm quite convinced, were sold at a sale of Vermeer's paintings, effects, Vermeer's effects, Shortly after his death, he was bankrupt. He died in bankruptcy. His widow was trying desperately to raise money. His, his executors of his estate, one of his. There was a sale. We don't know what was in it. We don't have, but this painting, which I think may have been unfinished, partly why you see nothing in the background. You don't have, it feels a little bit like it just wanted a little bit more work. It hadn't been quite done but they wanted to make it more elaborate, so they added this cloak. That same kind of handling occurred with the, the painting we have at the gallery, the uh, woman with a, um, what's it called? Flute, Flute thank you. <laughs> Flute. Those two paintings, I think, were made ready for that sale. They were made ready for that sale. So they are both incredibly fascinating works. Really give you a sense, you know, when you start to look at, the, you think about them, the way they're painted, the kind of history, the place they are in that society, what's going on in the Dutch world at that time. Vermeer's place in the city, the great master who somehow, through the accidents of history, ended up in this you know, state where he was, you know, couldn't sell anything, couldn't sell his paintings or his, the paintings he was dealing with. Um, still creating, we're trying to create for a different market, different world. Creating works that, such as this, that uh, we can still fortunately enjoy today. Thank you very much.